turn down the seatbelt light. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. Before you get started with actions, it's important to ask yourself, are you going to be uploading this movie to a video service such as YouTube? Are you planning to make this video accessible to smartphones? If the answer to either or both of those actions is yes, then you'll have to save actions for another movie. Actions make the movie interactive, so user participation is required, and you've got to be on a Mac or PC for that. All actions include selections from at least two fields, event, or the interaction that triggers the action, and action, or the result of a user's input. For example, if you click a button, the movie advances to the next frame. The clicking is the event, and the advancement to the next frame is the action. When you select the Open URL, Open URL in New Window, Go to Frame, or Go to Section Actions, a third field appears. Because you want the event to trigger an action that goes to a specific frame, movie, or URL, you must specify which one. For example, when you choose Open URL, a URL field appears. Now that the basics are out of the way, let's talk about the more difficult stuff. The end event. The end event is available only to action objects. You can change most objects into action objects by right-clicking the object, accessing the advanced menu, and then clicking Convert to Action Object. Once you've converted an object to an action object, it'll display in the timeline's action view. Let's say you have a cursor in the frame, and you want that cursor to move across the frame first, and then you want the movie to advance to the next frame. You would use an action like End, so the cursor can move gracefully along its trajectory, and then, when it's finished, prompt the movie to continue on. The Play Action Object action. The action Play Action Object requires an additional object in the frame, the action object. When you choose the Play Action Object action, you associate it with that object. That object will play when the event occurs. Here's an example of using this action. Let's create an input box that shows users a success message when they answer correctly, and then the movie will advance to the next frame. We already have text on the screen asking the user a question. Now we just need to give them a way to answer it. First, create an input box. We'll allow infinite attempts at answering this input box, and we'll add the correct entry here. Then we'll add a bubble to the frame. This is the bubble we want to appear when the user enters the correct entry. Right-click the bubble and convert it to an action object. Because this bubble object contains a congratulatory message, we'll name it Success Caption. Now we'll set the bubble object to 0% opacity and click the keyframe button. This ensures that the success caption doesn't appear as soon as the frame starts. Move the playhead one second in, then slide the opacity to 100%. A new keyframe is automatically created. Click on the input box again. Over in the Object Properties window pane, we'll add the success event and trigger it to perform the Play Action Object action. The object that will be played is the success caption. Click on the bubble object again. We'll add the end event to this one and trigger it to perform the Go to Next Frame action. We can use preview mode to check this out before building the output. Looks like it works just the way we want it. The success caption only displays when the user enters the correct entry in the input box, and then the movie moves along to the next frame. The Set Visual States action. A visual state action sets the look of an object. For example, when the user moves a cursor over a button, it changes color. The visual states action is already present by default on the button object. Try adding a button, then check out its object properties. You'll see that it comes with several set visual state actions, as well as the corresponding visual states. You can add visual states to other objects, too. First, click the New Visual State button. The active visual state shows a blue background, and the name displays in the Visual State section heading. You use the Object Properties window pane to set the object's look for the selected visual state. Notice that the properties you can change are limited when creating visual states. Next, click on the default visual state to return to the object's full set of properties. Finally, we'll add the action. The click event will trigger the Set Visual State action. The shape that the visual state will be applied to is this object, and we'll select the visual state we just created. In this example, we simply made the object change color when clicked, but if you wanted to, you could make a different object change its visual state when the event happened on this object. For example, a user could move the cursor over an object that says, Hover here for more information, and the text on another object would change to show additional information. The Static to Dynamic trick. What if your movie image already has a button shown and you want the user to appear to click that button to kick off an action? Well, that button is part of the image, so you can't assign an action to that exactly. But what you can do is draw a simple rectangle around that area and remove the border from the rectangle so that it's invisible to the user. 
Then, assign an action to the invisible rectangle. As far as the user is concerned, the action is tied to the button from the image. These are just a few of the things you can do using actions. For more information, see the online help.